One of my favourite ways of fishing is waggler. I love fishing waggler. It's something I've been brought up with and I, I love catching fish on the waggler. And there's two ways on a commercial fishery that I try and fish the waggler. One is when it's deep and one is a splashy waggler style where it's quick fishing as I call it and you need different tattle to do different jobs. So what I'm going to show you is the way that I do it. The first thing is fishing deep. When you're fishing deep for carp and F1s, I think you want a longer rod. You want a 13 foot style rod. And I use this Signature Pro Classic Float 13 foot. Now that's important that. Why? Because I want to be able to cast up to 10 foot deep. It's easier. When you use a splashy tight waggler rod like 11 and 12 foot, you don't cast the same. So I use a 13 foot rod. A normal conventional rod. It's got plenty of runners on. The line runs through free. And it's nice and makes fishing simple. So I use a Signature Pro 13 foot rod. Now what I like about this rod, it's a nice soft action. So in winter fishing, I can use smaller hooks and get away with lighter lines. Therefore, I'll catch more fish, hopefully. But that rod makes life a lot easier when I'm fishing deep on the waggler. Now the real line is really important when you're fishing the waggler. And I use, what I use is the power line the MVR power line. So when I'm fishing and I'm bagging, I use the old 21. And in the winter, when I'm F1 fishing, I use the, the 0.19. And those are two lines I use. Now, why do I use them? Because they don't sink too deep. And when I'm fishing the waggler, I don't want the line to sink too deep. I want the line to go just under the surface, out of the way of the wind. So I fish it feeder, and I want the line to go deep, then I use the, the, the feeder mono, the carp feeder mono, 0.26, but that goes too deep. I don't think that's right for the waggler, but for the feeder, it's absolutely perfect. So all you do is fill your spool up so it just comes inside the spool to help you cast out a lot easier. That's the rod, that's the line. Now what about the float? So when I'm fishing deep, which like I said can be up to 10 foot deep, I want a float that's long and slim so that it goes under the surface drag and holds steady. And I like these Signature Pro ones up to five gram. I don't think you need much bigger uh, float for this style of fishing. But when you get these floats, you get three tips with them. The loader at the bottom, so you can unscrew the weights and take the attachments on. If you want a bit more weight down the line, you can mess about with them and change them and, and they make it life a lot easier. But it's got three, three tips in them. They're interchangeable. The fine one I use for silverfish fishing, if I was fishing for skimmers and roach, I'd just put the fine one on. If I were F1 fishing or F1 and carp, I'd use the middle one. But if I were fishing with suspended pellet, just for carp, I'd use a fat one. So it gives you, the angler, the choice of what style fishing and fish you want to fish for. That flow is perfect. They go straight, they sit in the water, and that's all that you want in a float. They're very, very adjustable. Now I fix them on the line with a swivel. So if I want to change the size of the float during the day, I can change the size of the float. I just put float stops either side to stop it and, and, and that works absolutely perfect. It's a simple setup. So everything there is to help you. You can adjust the weight, you can adjust the tip. You can adjust the depth quite easily by moving the float stops up and down. And if you want to take the float on and off, you've got a swivel that works perfectly. And then on the main part of the, of the gear, the terminal tattle, it's fairly simple. The deeper I go, the deeper I go, the, I have a couple of shots on. The shallower I go, I don't have any shot. So usually I just have two number eights, just spread out, one above the hook length and one somewhere near the middle. And the only reason I have them on is so it straightens the line out for me and makes it simple. But if it was a bit shallower and I were only fishing three foot, I'd probably only have one shot on. Now the hook and the hook length. Now I'm, I'm very fussy about the hook and the hook length because I think that's important between you catching the fish and not. And I have simple setups for this. The only hook I use is a CS27. Usually when you're doing this style of fishing, you'll be using a banded pellet on the hook. And that CS27, if I'm fishing for carp and F1s, I use an 18. If I'm fishing just for carp, I use a 16. 
and I, and I tie them up quite simple. If I'm using the 18, I, I tie them up to MVR 012 and 014. 18, so size 18 up to an 012, 014 line. And if I'm going to use a 16, then it'll be an 016 and an 018 line. I use them two combinations towards the hook. Why do I use 018 and 06? It's all about how many fish you're catching. The more fish you're catching, the heavier you can go. But them my two combinations, and that's all that I use when it comes to commercial fishing. I just try and keep it simple. And that's my basic setup. I have a, a 30 centimeter hook length so that you can so that the tattle goes nice and smooth and free. 30 centimetres, that'll drop through the water, the fish will intercept it, and as far as I'm concerned, that is the perfect setup for fishing deep on commercial fisheries. There we go, a nice, simple, I don't think it's a big carp, I think it's like a crassio, but it won't, it won't in long. And one of the reasons why I like these 13 foot signature rods, look at action on it, how soft they are. And when you're fishing deeper waters, with, and you're fishing a waggler deeper, you want a softer rod, it's not instant. And that's what I like about this, this rod, you can see it bending through nicely. Plate fish, I mean, look at depth I'm fishing seven foot. And go, oh, it's a little, uh, a little mirror. Right. Let the rod do the work. That's it. Bring it to you and net it. That's it. Waggler fishing at its best. Calm down. He's fighting more at net than he's in uh, water. Back into the net with, via the landing net, and away we go. So basically, it's a simple procedure. When you're fishing any kind of waggler, whether it be a, a, a splashy pellet type waggler or a conventional waggler, there's the same routine. Put your bait on, in this case it's a banded pellet. Just cast it in water in front of you, like that. Put your rod on your rod rest, pick your catapult up. Just a few pellets, fire them out. And wherever they land then, you want to cast the float on top of them pellets. Break, and when you're fishing deep, it's different to a splashy waggler because you want to just slightly overcast and sink your line and bring the waggler back onto the pellets. But with a splashy waggler, it's different. You want to cast into the pellets. And you bring it back into them, pellets are falling through the water and hopefully your bait is either dropping or suspended where them pellets are. And all you're waiting, there we go, straight to a fish. And all what happened then is, I brought, the, I brought the waggler into the pellets, pellets are falling through the water, the fish come in and they pick yours up. And sometimes it can be as easy as that. And it's a little bit bigger, this one. Use the bend of the rod to play the fish. I always say a bend of a rod is like the elastic on a pole. Don't be afraid of using it. Play the fish on the bend of the rod. And then if the fish goes to the left, turn the rod over and put it to the right and bring it back. And if it goes to the right, turn it over 
and put the rod to the left and it'll swim back. Keep the rod nice and low. And, it'll and at the moment the fish starts swimming, winding. There you go, it's on the rod end, look. Just take your time and let the bend of the rod bend and do its work. So after the peg, well, it's a little bit bigger than I was expecting this. There we go, another mirror look, probably five pounds, there we go. So, we've got the fish and, the, and now you get yourself into a routine. Get the fish, if the pellets come off, put the fish into the net. Pellet on the band. Drop it in the side. Pick your catapult up. Fire between three and six pellets. Depends how, how the fish are feeding. And when you're fishing with a deep rig, behind you, cast it. Just overcast it. Rod under, flick it and sink your line, and just wind it back onto the pellets, then you're fishing again. And that's the routine that you've got to follow. Got one. Here we go. That were a nice bite. It pulled the line, that one. And they do sometimes, but they don't always. But that one pulled the line. So when I'm bringing it in, I'm trying to work out what the fish is doing. So I use the bend of the rod to pull the gent of the fish. And the moment it starts swimming towards me, I wind. I wind and I wind while it's swimming now towards me. And then when I can see the flow under the surface in the side, you lift it up and it's there in front of you. And because it's there in front of you, you've got your landing net. And it doesn't matter if it fights about here because it's not affecting the shoal out in the swim. So use the bend of the rod and the moment it starts swimming, wind it in. And then let it do all its fighting under the rod tip and that's a carassio. Look at that, what a beautiful fish they are. There you go, you just net it. And when you net it, bring it to you. Try not to pick it up, leave it in the net, leave the, the landing net over your knees, the fish is there free and if you can get the hook out without touching the fish, in this case I can, it's perfect. The fish is in the net, sometimes you've just got to move its head over but don't pick the fish up and then just transfer the fish into the landing net, into the keep net sorry, by the landing net. Now just prune it in, turn it over, no harm done and you're fishing again. Then we're back to his routine. The pellet's still on, drop it inside, pick your catapult up, a few pellets, six pellets, fire them, plop, 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 plop. You're ready for casting, and what you're trying to do is just overcast slightly, put the rod tip under, unwind, and then just flick it out the water, and that'll sink your line, and it'll bring it back onto them pellets that have gone in the water. So what happens then is your bait's falling through with them pellets and that's what you're trying to do. And just sit there for a bite. Mate, that's what happened. It intercepted it, very simple. 
and I'm straight into another fish. And again, same routine, use the bend of the rod to play the fish. Keep it nice and low, because what you're trying to do, like I said, get the fish swimming to you. When it's swimming, you're low when it's swimming, and you just keep winding like it's swimming now. So I can keep winding, winding, and then what I'm trying to do is get it to the rod end. Gets it rod end. The fish is going to the left, so I'm turning my rod over, putting it to the right. That's turned the fish, and it's bringing it back into my peg. Obviously, if it goes the other way, the same principle. Now the fish is a nodder, this is a nodder this, so you've got to be a bit more careful with nodders. But you, look look at bend it rod arm using it, using the whole rod, I'm not pointing the rod at it. It's inside, there we go. It's up in front of me now and I'm, and I'm playing the fish and that's all I'm trying to do. Get the fish out of the feed, feeding area where I'm not disrupting the other fish and play it in front of you. This is a mirror. Oh, it's gone mad this one, crikey. It, it don't bother me playing them here. I, I don't care how long it takes. I see lots of people lose fish here because they're trying to bully them inside and I don't. I take my time and make sure I get the fish because I've got the fish from the feeding area and that's my main intention. So when it's in front of you, just pick your net up. Net it. Oh, it's all ready. Well, how lucky with that. The hook's come out so I don't have to unhook it and if that's the case, put it straight into the net. Perfect. So the other style of waggler fishing is quite simple. It's just one of the simplest forms of fishing there is. It's either called a splashy waggler or the pellet waggler. And it's instant fishing, it's quick fishing. And the setup I'm going to show you is it couldn't be any simpler. The first thing is the rods. There's two rods. I use the MVR 11 foot pellet or the 12 foot pellet. There's two that I use. The 11 foot pellet one I use for smaller island work where I'm not casting so far. It's a nice small rod because I'm casting all the time. I'm in and out. I don't want a 13 foot long rod. I want shorter rods that are a little bit more powerful because I'm working the, the, the rod and the, the float all the time. And the 12 foot one is for bigger distances, and that's all I use them for. So I work out which distance I need to fish, and that depends then on the rod. Shorter work up to islands, up to 30 metres, I use the 11 foot. After 30 metres, I use the 12 foot. But they're both a bit more powerful, they're for carp fishing, and they're for casting slightly bigger floats. So, the setup. Explain the rods, the MVR 11 and 12. The, the real line is the, the power real line and I only put 021 on. I don't use anything else but .21 on that reel. It's just up to the spool for easy casting and it casts out nicely. Then the float. You want shorter, thicker floats for pellet waggler fishing because you're fishing shallower and you're casting more all the time, in, out, in, out, it's quick fishing. You want a thick top on, it's nice and buoyant, so, it, so when it casts in it goes bump and sits there. It's fixed to a swivel, so that it's, it's easy to change if you want to change the size, the distance or whatever, but it's fully loaded. You don't have any shot on the line, and it, and it cocks to just half of that orange. So when you cast in, it goes like that. Two stops either side, so, so it stops it sliding up and down, and, and like I said, it's easy with the swivel so you can change the sizes. Then the hook length. There's no shot on this, and I'll explain that in a while, but there's no shot on that hook length. And it's straight to a 30 centimetre hook length, and because you're fishing a little bit delicate, more uh, for bigger fish, you're in and out. I only use 016 and 018 to a 16 hook. I don't use anything else. You don't need no smaller hooks. And the reason for that is it's instant. When I'm fishing with a waggler, I'm fishing deep, I'm casting out and I'm sinking the line. With a splashy waggler, it's called a splashy waggler for a reason. It hits the water, it makes a splash, the fish come up, and there's only one bait there, one pellet, and that's yours. 
So the, what you don't do is cast in and wind it back because you're moving the bait away from the splash. And if you do that, you won't get a bite. And the next thing is you must oh, never forget is if you don't get a bite in 10 seconds, you probably won't get a bite. So you're winding it in, you're casting out. It's action all the time, it's fast fishing. This is why you need 11 and 12 foot rods because the quicker, all the time, you, you more action. You might have to cast out 300 times in a match, but the idea is to cast out, use a splash to catch the fish. The best part, the best part of splashy waggler fishing, being a Yorkshireman, is when you don't have to feed and you can cast to the fish. You can try and get that pellet in front of the fish. The ear, the float, it's in the water, they come up, one pellet, you've got him. That's all that you're looking for. So, there's the two forms of waggler fishing. One, if you want it deep, 13 foot rod, it makes it cast easier. One, when you're fishing shallow, for pellet waggler fishing, you want 11 for short distances, a 12 foot for a bit further. And then the, the only two forms of waggler fishing that you need on a commercial fishery. So I've just cast out. 10 seconds it went under and I've got a Carasio. And you can see the rod's a bit different, it's a, there's a bit more power in it because it's fast fishing. Just bring it in nice and steady. There you go. There you go. Just caught one two foot deep. And it's nice and simple fishing. It's the, probably the simplest form of fishing that we do. So what, the routine is this. Put your fish in your net. Make sure your pellet's okay on the hook. Put it in your casting position. Get a few pellets, fire them out. Lift it up and try and cast it in the middle of them pellets. And what you're trying to do is make that float plop and don't move it. It's a bit like feeder fishing. You've all heard it, don't move the feeder or you don't move the splashy wag. Okay? It's very important because you want the fish to come to that noise, they come up and they take your pellet. What you don't want to do is bring it away from the pellet. You're using the splash of the float to attract the fish. So you cast it out and you leave it. And trust me, if you don't get a bite in 10, in 10 seconds, you probably won't get a bite. There's always an exception to the rule, but most times you won't get a bite. So what I always say, I give it 20, and if I haven't got a, if I haven't got a fish, I bring it back in, because I'm not gonna catch one. The idea, splashy wag, use a splash to catch the fish. So, what I do, I get to my routine, Catapult, feed. And I'm going to tell you a little secret in a minute. Cast it out. Cast it, plop, leave it, don't move it. And what you're looking for now is a fish to come up and take that pellet. They come to the splash of the float, thinking it's a pellet, take one, there's only yours there and hopefully you get it. That's why it's called fast fishing. So what I do when I catapult my pellets, I probably do that two or three times and then on fourth cast I don't feed, I just cast it in, I don't feed at all. So like this next time all I'll do, I'll wind it in and I'll just cast it and, and hopefully the fish will hear that float it in the water, come up and take it. Cast, break, splash, don't move it. And you're waiting for one to come to that splash now. There you go, how's that? That worked, you see. I fed three times, didn't catch one. I didn't feed, they come to the splash, thinking it's a pellet and got one. Don't tell anybody I told you that.
and now we've got a little bit more aggressive gear on. You know, we're fishing 016s, 216, because I don't think the up makes a noise, uh, uh, it makes a difference because I think they actually come to the splash. So you can be a bit more aggressive with fish. There you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's an F1. Not even a Kakarasio, it's an F1. And that's how you fish a splashy waggler. It's really quick, it's in and out all the time. And that's why you need shorter rods, a little bit more powerful because you're working it all the time. So, 11 foot for fishing short, 12 foot for fishing longer. It's as simple as that. Was in probably five seconds that, and I think we've got a carp now. But if you look at the action of the rod, you can see that it's bending through when you're using the bend of the rod to bring the fish in. One of the mistakes a lot of people make, they don't use bend at rod enough to play the fish, and, and, and it's really important, I think. Use the bend of the rod, waiting for it to start swimming towards you. And then when it swims towards you, just wind it. This, this one's not swimming towards me yet, but so I'm just taking my time. And because at gear, it's all different, a bit more aggressive, you can be a bit more aggressive with them. It's all about the tattle that you're using. I've wound the fish in, it's under rod end now, and it's just... Just take my time and get him out. I don't see too many people losing fish under the rod like at this position because they see them and they try and bully them and bring them up. And I always think it's hard enough to get them on, so make sure you get them out, just take your time. Let the, let the fish will tell you when it's ready. Just make sure you get it in net. And of course, when you see your float, you know the fish is only two foot under, under the float, so you know it's near the surface. Ooh, nice fish, this one. And I bet that bait won't, won't there you go, look at that, 10 pound. Thank you very much, thanks for coming. There we go, how good is that? And that is instant. You, you get that instant. And you're just casting in, casting out, and you get them instant. And that's what Splashy Wag's all about. You never leave it in the water long. That's a nice little plumpy, that one. Here we go. And back to routine. Simple. Well, that's been a fantastic few hours fishing on the Waggler. I've caught some fish, fishing deep, and then at the end they were all on the surface and I managed to catch them on the splashy Waggler. So there's two forms of Waggler fishing that you really need to look at. I hope you've learnt a few things, picked a few tips up that's going to help you catch some more fish in the future. So all I've got to do now is put my fish back, 
And that's it. Thanks for, thanks for watching.